Okay, so even if you don't know much math, you probably could guess an answer that's pretty close to the actual correct solution to this problem, but you have to use some common sense and logic. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the problem, which is the following. A pump can drain a pool in seven hours. Another pump can do the job in nine hours. How long will it take if both pumps work together? All right, so that is the problem. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you have the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then of course, I'm gonna solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's take another look at this problem. And if you don't know much math or if you uh, don't remember much math, don't you know leave the problem. Again, I think you could take a pretty good guess here. So a pump can drain a pool in seven hours. That's one pool. Okay, so we have the same pool, it's filled up, and one pump can drain out this pool in seven hours. Now another pump can do the job in nine hours. How long will it take if both of these pumps work together? All right, so if they work together, how long will this job take? All right, so let's go to take a look at the correct answer. The correct answer is approximately 3.93 hours. Now, I could tell you right now, many, many people answered eight hours. This is incorrect. Now, let's just kind of use some common sense and logic here, right? So let me erase this, and let me uh, kind of make a simpler version of this problem. So let's suppose I have one pump that can drain this pool in nine hours. Okay, so I, I have a pump. Here is our little pool, and this pump right here can drain out the water in nine hours. Now, my friend has the same pump, and I say, hey, Bill, come on over with your pump. It's the exact same pump. Now I have two nine-hour pumps working on this pool to drain it out. How long do you think the job will take? Now, if you're saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you're probably just going to cut the time in half because you added a second pump. Well, that makes sense, and actually that's the correct answer. So if you added another nine hour uh, pump on this job, the total time to do the job would be 4.5 uh, 4 hours. That's actually, that's actually the correct answer to that problem. But it just kind of makes sense. But here's the deal, right? When I call my friend up, he doesn't have a nine hour pump. He has a better pump. That's a seven hour pump, right? So instead of cutting the job in half, right? It should go faster than four and a half hours, right? And of course, the actual answer here is uh, 9.3 hours. But a lot of people, because again, I said, hey, you got to use a little bit of common sense and logic, are going to look at nine and eight and be like, I don't know, maybe I should average these together, which of course is, I'm sorry, nine and seven. And they're going to average those numbers together, which uh, the answer is eight. But that doesn't make any sense, right? I mean, if I have just one pump and I want to drain this pull out as fast as possible, one pump can do the job in seven hours, right? So if I add another pump, it should be uh, uh, faster, excuse me, than seven hours, not longer, eight hours, right? So again, you know, with just some common sense and logic, I think a lot of you could have uh, come up with a pretty um, close or reasonable answer. But anyways, if you know the actual math to solve this problem, you definitely get a happy face and an A+. Plus. Congratulations. But uh, what I'm going to be doing here is using algebra to solve this problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. And the first thing that we want to do is to consider what I call uh, the rule of three. And that is uh, read a problem at least three times before you start to do anything. Make sure you understand the information in the problem. You know, visualize what's going on and understand the question. And again, here, if we, uh, you know, think about it from a common sense standpoint, you know, you kind of simplify the problem. You're like, I got one pump at nine hours. This is a faster pump. So the job should be, you know, even faster than just one pump at seven hours, right? Nine hours, seven hours. Again, you're kind of going through this logic. This is what you want to do when I'm talking about the rule of three. You think about the problem and you can kind of come up with some common sense expectations of what you think the answer, you know, should be or kind of, you know, maybe ballpark 
you know, what should be like a reasonable answer. I guess that's the best way to say it. But uh, the, what you want to do here is kind of model the situation, okay, too. So you could come up with a quick sketch, you can draw yourself a little pool. Here's one pump that can do the job in seven hours. And then we're going to add another pump that can do the job in nine hours. This may uh, kind of, you know, make you think about the problem, you know, from a common sense, logical standpoint. You just don't want to look at this and start doing stuff with the numbers. But in this case, what we have is an algebra word problem, okay? The best way to solve this problem is to realize that we're talking about something called work, all right? Everyone's favorite uh, word, work. Now, uh, you know, we can't escape work. You know, sometimes we have to do things we don't like. But in algebra, okay, or physics or whatnot, this is what we call a work problem. And the great thing about this type of problem is that we have a formula. Okay, so here is the formula for algebra word problems. Now, you need to kind of recognize that when you are dealing with a uh, word problem that involves some sort of job, some sort of work, and oftentimes these um, uh, type of problems, you know, have people involved, like one person can dig a hole or cut the lawn at this pace, or one machine can produce this amount of, you know, widgets, whatever the case might be, you got to be able to, you know, recognize that you're dealing with a work problem. And that just comes with, uh, you know, instruction and experience, right? Okay, so here is a formula that you want to kind of uh, lock in into your long-term memory, especially for those of you that want to understand algebra. And uh, here is a formula for algebra work problems. Okay, so it goes like this. So the one over the time it takes one uh, thing or person to do a job. All right now, this is going to be complicated. I'll explain this a couple of times. So the time it takes for one person or one machine to do a job, it's going to be one over that time plus the time it takes another person or another machine to do a job, it's gonna be one over that time. Now we can have as many machines or people here, but here's the deal, okay? The time it takes um, for all of these people or machines to work together, that time is one over the time, uh, one over the total time or the together combined time. Now that is pretty confusing, but so let me go ahead and try to <laughs> explain this again. All right, so in this case, we have one pump, right? So that's the time, one over that time, plus one over the time of a second pump. Now, again, it could be a person, you know, how, how fast they can do a job, but the total time when, we, when they work together is gonna be one over the sum of these fractions, all right? So this is what we're looking for. Uh, this denominator, one over this fraction right here is the time or the answer. Uh, when all of these uh, people or machines are working together. All right, so this will make more sense once we uh, set this up. And work problems are kind of notoriously a little bit confusing, right? So if you're like, hey, Mr. You 2 Math Man, you totally confused me. Well, I'm going to go ahead and set this problem up, and then we'll do the algebra, and you'll see how lovely the solution will be. Okay, so here is our problem. Now, as I indicated, uh, for those of you that uh, know uh, some algebra, you should recognize this as a work problem. So you want to be thinking about that work formula. So I have one pump that could do the job in seven hours and another pump that could do the job in nine hours. I'm looking for the time it will take if both pumps work together. So I'm thinking about this equation. So I got pump one can do the job in seven hours. Pump two can do the job in nine hours. So I'm going to let this variable X equal the time it takes uh, when both of these pumps are working together. Okay, so we need to take this information and basically plug it into this formula. Okay, so this is gonna be the time for one pump, this will be the time for the other pump, and then X will be our variable, and this is the time it will take or, um, when both of these pumps are working together. All right, so hopefully this makes sense, and let's go ahead and plug this information in to this lovely equation. Okay, so one over seven, seven is the time it takes one pump, right? Now the other pump is nine hours, right? So that's gonna be one over nine, and this is gonna be equal to, this sum right here is gonna be equal to one over the time, uh, the combined time, okay? This is the time that we're looking for, um, the time it takes from when both of these pumps are working together. All right, so hopefully this equation makes sense, and at this point, now, really, what it comes down to is your ability to solve this algebra equation. 1 over 7 plus 1 over 9 is equal to 1 over x. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and get into that right now. But uh, before we do, let's get into this. And that is an invitation to support this YouTube channel. Now, my channel is all about trying to make math clear and understandable and interesting. But they're really my number one goal, okay, beyond all of that, is to help those people that are struggling to math, particularly those people that think they're bad in math. I'm telling you right now, I've been teaching for decades. There is no such thing as a bad math student, okay? Now, you might be saying, come on, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you know, there's people that failed your math class and stuff. Yes, indeed, but that had nothing to do with their potential, okay? It really comes down to your effort. But most importantly, if you want to learn math, you uh, need a crystal clear, comprehensive math instruction that you can understand, all right? So hopefully you have a great math teacher. And if you don't, find someone that you like and understand that knows what they're talking about that can teach you math. And then it's really a function of time, all right? So don't give up. And if you like my teaching style, well, check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description below. And for those of you that are studying algebra, you know, you might want to check out like my pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, or maybe I'm a pre-calculus course. You'll find links to those in the description. Now, if you're not a math student but want to rebuild your math skills, check out my math skill rebuilder course, right? Uh, here I go over basic math, algebra, geometry, and a ton of other stuff. But anyways, I need your support to reach as many people as possible on YouTube. So hopefully you'll hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification button as well so you get my latest videos. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually solve this equation. So we have 1 over 7 plus 1 over 9 is equal to 1 over x. And x is the time it takes both of these pumps uh, working together, right? So one pump can pump out the pool at, uh, at 7 hours or uh, in 7 hours. Another pump can do the job in 9 hours, right? Together, they do it in x hours. So our answer here is going to be in hours, our unit of measure. Okay, so what do we need to do here to solve this equation? Well, I don't know about you. I'm not a particular fan of working with fractions. So I'm going to go ahead and start to clear some of these fractions. So when you have an equation and you want to clear fractions, the best thing you can do is multiply the entire equation by the lowest common denominator. All right, so I have 7 here and 9 here. The lowest common denominator is 63. Now, the actual uh, lowest common denominator is 63x, but uh, for this purpose here, I'm just going to go ahead and use 63 to start to simplify, clean up this equation. So we're going to multiply this entire equation by 63. Now, when you multiply an equation by the LCD, okay, what you're going to do is clear the fractions. All right, so this is one approach. Now, you could add these fractions. That's another approach, and then you'll have a proportion. Uh, so that's a good approach as well. As long as you get the right answer, that's what counts. So let's go ahead and multiply the entire equation by the LCD. So 63 times 1 over 7, 7 goes into 63, 9. And then 63 times 1 over 9, 9 goes to, it goes into 63, 7. And then 63 times 1 over x, well, that's 63, 63 over x. Okay, now if you're looking at this work and you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't really know what's going on here. Well, that just tells me you need to review how to solve equations in algebra. No big deal. But uh, if you uh, notice here, I got rid of these fractions. So now we have 9 plus 7 is equal to 63 over 7. Okay, so let's go ahead and add 9 and 7. Of course, the answer is 16. So now we're down to 16 is equal to 63 over x. So this is one fraction, and I can make this number a fraction as well by putting it over 1. So what we have here is what we call a proportion. So if you have two equal fractions, if I have 1 half, and this is equal to another fraction that has the same value as 1 half, let's just think about it, maybe like a fraction 5 over 10 or 4 over 8. Well, this is a proportion, okay? Two equal fractions is a proportion in mathematics. And there is a property you need to know about proportions, and that is the cross product. So when you cross multiply 2 times 5, this right here is 10. This is equal to uh, 1 times 10, which, of course, is 10. So when you cross multiply in a proportion, uh, the answer or the products are equal. This is called the cross product, and we can use that to solve this equation. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. 
So this is 16 over 1, right? 16 is equal to 63 over x, or 16 over 1 is equal to 63 over x. Now I can just cross multiply. So 16 times x is 16x. 1 times 63 is 63. Now I have a lovely one-step equation. So to solve this, all I have to do is divide both sides by 16. So x is approximately equal to 3.93 hours. And this answer makes sense to me. Okay, I'm like, yes, yes. You know, if I have one pump that could do the job, another pump, I know it's going to be, you know, less than 4.5 4, uh, 4. Uh, hours, excuse me, because I thought about the problem using some common sense and logic, right? All right, so hopefully, you know, those of you that really want to understand the algebra, you know, to solve algebra work uh, word problems, you know, hopefully understand the uh, formula. It is a bit confusing, but the only way you're going to get better is to practice, practice, practice. But, uh, you know, for those of you that didn't know the math and you got pretty close to the correct answer, that is fantastic, right? So that's why when I um, do these problems on YouTube, I never say, hey, use algebra to solve this problem or, you know, I don't do that. I put the problem out there and I encourage uh, you to solve it, you know, with whatever math skills you have, okay? That's the thing about math, you know, you're not going to get better unless you try. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.